Good morning and welcome to the Abundant Love Sunday morning live stream. I am your MC Minister Chris Halfacre and I'm just delighted, I'm excited for all of you that came into the house of the Lord, amen? amen. And I'm also enthusiastic and excited for those of you that are out there tuning in. We appreciate you and we just uh, thank you for tuning in and spending your time with us this morning. Now, right now, we're going to have our praise leader uh, bring us a call for worship. We're going to have evangelist Cynthia Franks. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we clap our hands for Jesus on this morning? Hallelujah. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. How many come to glorify him on today? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. I come to go. Because we're thankful, not for the things that you've done, but for who you are. And we just, we glorify your name. We thank you for waking us up in our right minds, Lord. 
We thank you for your grace and mercy, Father. We thank you for the, our strength and our activity as our limbs, Lord. We thank you for healing. We thank you for financial interest. We thank you for coming in this service so far this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Lord, for salvation. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, without him, where would we be? And we just glorify you. We thank you. We lift you up. We thank you for this place called Abundant Love, Lord. A place where we can worship together. A place where we can um, we can discuss and, and, and lay our burdens down um, together as a family, Lord. And we just, uh, we thank you right now. Father, we ask that you come into the service right now, Lord. We ask that you fill the room with your presence, Lord. Father, we need you right now. In the name of Jesus, we glorify your name. We lift you up. Hallelujah! Father, we need you. We need you right now, Lord. Now, Father, we ask, Lord, that you bless abundant love. Bless those that are on their way, Lord. Those that are here and those that are watching um, from the live stream. We thank you right now in advance, Lord. We thank you for a word that's going to be delivered today, Father. We count it done, Lord. But we ask you that, that your word, the mouth of the word carry, in the name of Jesus. Bless those. Bless those that are here. Bless the elders of the house. The evangelists, the deacons, the missionaries, the ministers. Father, we ask, Lord, that you touch our ministers of music, Lord. Yes. Touch them right now. Yes. No, no. Touch our musicians Touch right now, Father. Yes. The instruments of your word, Lord. Touch them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we thank you, Lord. We reverence your holy name. And we thankful for your presence. In your son Jesus' name. Amen. Now right now we're going to have our scripture reading by Minister Gary Bush, Jr. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, our scripture this morning will be found in the fourth book of Proverbs. We'll read verse number 23. And then we'll skip to Matthew, the 15th chapter, and read verses 11, and then 17 through 19. Amen. Amen. And we'll read those all together. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. When you have to say amen. Amen. You don't have to say wait. I didn't hear no waits. <laughs> all right, Proverbs 4 and 23 reads, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. All right, skip to Matthew 15 chapter. And we'll read verse 11 together. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Verse 17, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the drought. 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, 
adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Um, we have just read Proverbs 4 and 23, also Matthew 15, 11, 17, 18, and 19. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most importantly, the doers of his word. Now we're going to put the service into the hands of our announcements. Evangelist Virgil. Amen. Amen. yet observing social distancing and we re, uh, require we reserve the right to require face masks and temperature checks. Amen. Amen. If you would like to be a part of our live streams, we have our live streams on Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. We have our live stream Sunday school and at 9.50 a.m. we have our interactive Sunday school class. Our morning worship begins at 10.45 a.m. And our Sunday intercessory prayer is at 6 o'clock p.m. On Wednesday nights, we have intercessory prayer at 6 o'clock p.m. And we have our Disciples Academy Bible Study at 6.30 p.m. If you happen to miss our live streams, we are archived on Abundant Love Church Facebook page and YouTube channel AL Ministries. That's capital A, capital L Ministries. On Monday mornings at approximately 8 o'clock a.m., we do have a motivating moments video from our pastor to help you get a good start to your week. Our upcoming events include the theme for October is Matters of the Heart. And this theme comes from Proverbs 423 and Matthew 15 11 and 17 through 19 if you are not on our email list you can leave a comment below with your email address or email us at abundantlove at frontier.com and you can receive the weekly outline for this series incidentally October is clergy appreciation month Amen. <laughs> So this month we will be honoring our clergy. Leaders, pastor would like to have a brief meeting after morning worship today. So everyone in leadership, they need to see you after church today. On next Sunday, we will honor our pastor, Gary L. Bush Sr. Amen. He needs to sit down and rest because our special guest speaker will be Pastor Michael Payton and the Restoration Center during our morning worship service. Amen. Amen. Also, next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock p.m., we will have an ordination, installation, and appointing ceremony for some very special men and women of God. Please come out and help us support their elevation in Christ. Just a reminder to the congregation, next month we will be celebrating our 29th church anniversary. Amen. And we have invited guests to come and celebrate with us. Details are forthcoming, but we do know that we have services every Sunday. We have a guest, so we need you to come out and help support on next Sunday. I mean, on next month. Our sick and recovery include... Philip and Flora Johnson, Travion Hilliard, Rayfield Martin, Robert Bush, Winston Pearson, Vera Drew, Maronica Finch, and Andrea and Ayanna Green. And we do know that some of those people are present this morning. Yeah. They get yeah. Amen. The birthdays for this week were uh, Naomi Walker. She had a birthday on the 15th. I don't see her, but say happy birthday when you happen to see her. Amen. If you would like to make a contribution to our church, you may do so using Cash App. That's dollar sign Abundant Love Church. That's capital A, 
capital L, capital C. If you would like to give through uh, Givelify, you may do so at Abundant Love Church, but make sure you include Fort Wayne, Indiana. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 6577, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46896, if you would like to mail your contribution. If you happen to be in our area, you can drop it off at 2615 New Haven Avenue, Fort Wayne, Indiana. If you would like to give a special gift to our pastor, you may do so using his cash app, and that is dollar sign, Pastor GLB2, and that's all lowercase letters. And we do want to keep the Harris family in our prayers. We know that Pastor Elijah Harris lost his mother this week, and we want to make sure that we keep that family in our prayers. And this looks like that's all our announcements. Let's, let's, see, let's put your hands together for our praise team. Come on, let's. As they come, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know. I'm just excited about Jesus today. Anybody else excited about Jesus on today? Hallelujah. I'm glad you're alive and well and breathing. Hallelujah. You're not in the hospital. Hallelujah. You can walk on your own two feet. Hallelujah. You can lift your hands. Hallelujah. You can shout. Hallelujah. For the voice of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
worship and adore you. Hallelujah. We bow our hearts.
many know his name is excellent? Thank you. 
Shelly Quiet. Thank you, praise team. Amen. Certainly the Lord is worthy to be praised. How many know he's worthy to be praised? How many know that he woke you up this morning? And after waking you up this morning, he started me on my way. A lot of people woke up this morning. Couldn't turn over in the bed. Some people woke up and can turn over, but couldn't get out of the bed. Some people got out of the bed, but had to get in a wheelchair and have somebody push them on. But the Lord woke us up this morning, started us on our way, and we're thankful for the activities of our limbs. Come on, lift that hand again. You understand you can't do that without the power of God. The Bible says in Him we live, in Him we Come on, move a little bit. That's by the power of God. And in Him we have our being. So we're glad to have our being this morning. Certainly grateful for each of you that have come to the house of worship this morning. No wonder David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go where? Into the house of the Lord. We came to give Him praise. We enter into His gates with thanksgiving. After coming through the gates with a thanks on our lips, we come into the courts with praise. And then after praising him, we are thankful unto him and we bless his name. You know what bless his name means? It means that you have to give honor and admiration and love and worship to God. So many times we are asking God to bless us, but the Bible tells us to bless him. Come on, open your mouth and let's bless him right now. Come on, bless him. Bless his name because the Lord is good. His mercy is. If, you know, if the mercy of the Lord wasn't everlasting, that means that it would run out. And I would hate it so much if the blessing of the Lord ran out in the generation before my generation. But because the mercy of the Lord is everlasting, it includes all of us. And his truth endures to all generations. And so we're glad for the truth. Pastor, why are you glad for the truth? Because when you know the truth, you can be free. You shall know the truth and the truth. Come on, wave your hand if you're free this morning. I'm talking about really free. Doesn't mean all your bills are paid. Doesn't mean everything's going your way. Doesn't mean everybody is hunky-dory with you. But it means that God's got peace with you. And how many know peace with God is enough? Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. If God be for you, the Bible says who? Now, it don't say it like this, but I'm just going to, you know, amplify. Who has the audacity to be against you when God is for you? There's nobody stronger than God. He's stronger than the strongest. And so when God is on your side, you're on the winning side. Look at somebody say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Amen. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I know I'm a winner. I love one of my favorite movies. Probably my most favorite movie is uh, Remember the Titans. I love Denzel Washington movies. But there's one line in that movie that just kind of sticks out to me. And they were, he was talking to another coach and the coach says, well, if, if we win, he stopped and he looked at him and said, I'm going to win. Amen. He said it emphatically because he had confidence in his team and in his ability. And you've got to have confidence in your God. Amen. And you have to know that you are a winner even when the odds say you are not supposed to win. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Amen. You know what more than a conqueror is? A conqueror wins when he's supposed to. More than a conqueror wins when he's not supposed to. Look at somebody say upset. That's what they called it. Yesterday there were some upsets. Ranked teams took it on the chin yesterday. Got beat by what they called underdogs. 
Amen. And I want you to know something. Every time you win, the devil gets upset. Amen. Amen. He doesn't like it when you win. But how many know winning is what we do? Amen. All right. God bless you. This time we're going to receive our morning sacrifice by way of an offering. So we want you to prepare yourselves to give. If you are here in the sanctuary, uh, there's a number of ways that you can give. If you are going to give by cash or check, you need an envelope. And um, uh, we got, I, I may as well call her a deaconess because that's what she is. Amen. Amen. She's doing the service. Her and, and Milan doing the service of the deacons and the deaconesses this morning. So if you have a check or cash, uh, you need an envelope. If you'd kindly uh, mark that envelope with your name. Uh, don't be a doctor this morning. Use that legible good writing so that the people that record can understand and write legibly. If you are paying tithe in the envelope, please mark your envelope for tithes so that it goes to the proper place. Amen. Amen. If you're going to make a check out, Amen. Last time I checked, there was only about two or three of us using checks. Amen. The other person that used the check, he just gave me a high sign. Amen. There are about three of us that use checks now. But if you make a check out, make it out to the Abundant Love Church. Amen. For those of you that have your debit card or your credit card, they also have the card slider. So they'll come to your location. Uh, they'll take your contribution that way for the privacy of your contribution. Amen. Amen. And then you jet setters and young people that use your mobile phone for everything. Amen. There are two ways that you can give by your mobile phone. You can use the app Givelify. We can be found under the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. If you pull up Abundant Love Church, you'll get quite a few of them, but you want to get the one that's located in Fort Wayne. And then, of course, if you have Cash App, you can give by way of Cash App. Our address is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. That's with a capital A, capital L, and a capital C. And you'll see uh, the crest that you see on the pulpit. You will see that crest when you pull up uh, on Cash App. Amen? All right, everybody ready to give? I, I never thought when I started preaching 40 or so years ago that we would have to give so many instructions to give offering. Amen? But that just proves that the Lord has blessed us and given us an opportunity to be a blessing to him. Amen? All right, so whatever you have, uh, your envelope, your, 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 your phone or your hand, whatever you have, I want you to hold it up right now as an act of faith. Many times God told people to do things and not what they did brought the blessing. It was obedience to God that brought the blessing. Amen. One man was blind. The Lord made spittle and told him to go wash in the pool. It wasn't the spittle. It wasn't the water. It was obedience to what the man of God said. And we will find that if we're willing and obedient, even though inflation is up and prices are up and gas is up and groceries is up, if you're willing and obedient, God promises that you will eat the good of the land. And so let's pray here. Father, in the matchless, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father, that you have given seed to the sower. We thank you, Father that we have an opportunity, we have seed to give this morning. It is proof that you have given to us. And so, Father, we come today and we give back a portion of what you've given us. And we pray that you would receive our sacrifice today. Let it be a sweet-smelling savor in your nostrils. Receive it in the spirit that we give it because we have faith and confidence that if we give to the Lord, He'll give it back to us. Now bless each and every giver. Remember those that would give if they had it. Bless them that on the next occasion that they're able to give. And then, Father, lastly, uh, there are people that are watching by stream. 
from other states, other cities, other locales who have faithfully supported this ministry. I don't want you to forget them. And as they give, Lord, I extend the same blessing to them that I extend to this local congregation. Give it back to them. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name and the Lord's people, said, thank God. Amen. amen and amen. amen. All right, they're going to serve you and everyone is giving. Amen. Our praise leader is going to sing a little song for us here during the offering. Bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Everybody's giving. Amen. Everybody is giving. All right. How many know that he's Jehovah Jireh? That's what he is. Jehovah Jireh, he certainly 
is a provider. How many know he's a provider? Don't fool yourself. Amen. I remember the late Mother Gladys Petrie. Mother Gladys Petrie lived and to her 90s before she passed. And she was a child when they went through the Great Depression of 1929. 1929 through 1933, thereabout. Amen. Before many of us discovered America, we didn't go through it, but I'm sure in the history classes you read something about it. And we asked Mother Petrie how they did through the Great Depression. And she said, the Lord was so good to us. She said, the Depression never hit our house. She said, we ate every day and had everything that we needed. And that's why I don't want you to get caught up. Now, I know inflation and prices and things are going, but you got the promise of God on your side. Philippians 4.19 says, my God shall supply all your need according to his. Look at somebody say, he got enough. Amen. He's got enough to take care of us. Amen. If he has to fly a raven over here with a piece of bread in his mouth, amen. God going to feed you because you are his beloved. Amen. All right, God bless you. I certainly want to take this short opportunity. And I say short because uh, we have some formal things planned later on. But you all may know this month is famous for quite a few things. Uh, one of the things that this month is famous for is breast cancer awareness. And so I noticed that in the park on yesterday, they had a breast cancer walk. And people were out uh, dressed in pink and they were walking and they were lauding uh, the survivors of breast cancer. And that's all right and that's good. Uh, but I think we have something that trumps breast cancer. This is Clergy Appreciation Month. And we should take time. We should take time and recognize those men and women who are responsible for delivering the word of the Lord to us. No wonder the Bible says, How beautiful are the feet, them that preach the gospel and bring good news and glad tidings. Aren't you glad for good news? Amen. Many days I come into this uh, church with many things on my heart, many things on my mind, and some of them are pressing. But after hearing the praises of God and hearing the word of the Lord, my spirits are lifted. And I thank God, amen, for the good news that he brings. The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And we have preachers in this place um, that, can I say it like this, help us deliver the gospel. And so I want to take time uh, and I want to recognize them. I actually want to call their names. We'll do something a little later. But I want to call their names because I want you to understand that even when the pandemic uh, was going on, these people were in place making sure that the service of the Lord went on. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Almost like the mailman. I I snow or sleet or gloom of night. Amen. Can stop them from delivering the word because the Bible does say be instant in and you know what in and out of season means? It means you don't get time off. Because either it's in season or it's out of season. There is no in between. Yeah, you ever, I have never heard of in between season. Amen. You go out of one season into the next season. So the preacher has to always be ready to deliver the word. Do you all understand that the preacher sometimes got to give you good news for your solution while he's dealing with his own problems? But that's the way the word of the Lord is styled. But I love it, and I love that God has chosen people, amen, here in our midst. I'm just going to try to mention them as I should. Amen. This young man here, I call him young man, uh, is hard to beat. He's a steady man. Uh, Elder Greg Smith is just a fine, fine, supporter of this church. Stand up, Reverend Lou. Amen. Amen. You, all, you all can see he told me how to dress this morning. And, and uh, I certainly appreciate his service. Amen. We have my own brother who is soon to be ordained uh, in our church, Minister Robert Bush. Amen. Amen. Looking more, looking more like my daddy every day. Amen. Looking more like my father every day. 
Incidentally, we have a man that makes sure uh, that our sound is correct. Not just our sound, uh, he's a video operator, uh, he's an installer, he's an engineer. He, this young man does a little bit of everything. Yeah. Amen. In fact, uh, we have new cameras and video system that's going to be installed on next week so that we can remove that tripod out of the middle and not have a distraction in service. And, uh, he is also soon to be ordained this month, uh, Minister Christopher Half Amen. Give us a wave. Stand up. Give us a wave. Amen. Amen. Fine, fine, fine man of God. Amen. We have another young man that's up and coming. Amen. We love what the Lord is doing. I didn't think we would see him today because he had a medical incident, but he's here today. Amen. Looking like Ron Winans. Uh, amen. Amen. Nice friend, good brother, Minister Winston Pearson. Amen. Amen. And then we have a young man who just happens to carry the same name that I carry, Minister Gary Bush. Amen. He's a great supporter of the church. Amen. Musician and drummer and whatever else I need him to do. He told somebody, somebody this morning, he said, I'm an armor bearer. That's why I got protection. And you better have stamps on them. See that. Amen. Amen. And not just, not just men. We have some sisters that carry the word. Amen. In this place. And it's a good thing uh, that we have helped me. We have women that are designed to carry the word of the Lord. Now, uh, she's probably going to get me because uh, she doesn't go by the title of evangelist or missionary, uh, but Mother Kyra Smith is somebody word delivered, so we want to recognize Our church mother, amen. Incidentally, we have another church mother, uh, by way of Barbados. Yeah. 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 Amen. She, can, she can not only prepare a spiritual word, I'm a witness that she can prepare a natural word too. Yeah. Amen. Mother Herman Thomas. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 We have, um, some people don't know this, but we have history here. Uh, in our congregation. Incidentally, Mother Thomas's husband is the first black master surgeon of the army in the state of Indiana. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. John Thomas. Yeah. I Deacon Thomas, Deacon Thomas make 90 years old and look real good. Yeah. Amen. So you bless him. And incidentally, we have the first black salutatorian of Southside High School. Yes. And I'm Central. Central High School? Yeah. Of the city. Of the city. Oh, okay. I got it corrected. Not just that school, the city of Fort Wayne. First black salutatorian. Sister Vera Jewel. How many years? How many, how, many, how many years? How many years did you teach, Mother Sister Drew? How many teach? How many years did you teach? Thirty-six. Good God, my God. Thirty-six years, and, and you know what? And she's still teaching. Amen. I, I never underestimate the ability of teachers. Because teachers can say something to your child in one year that they'll remember for a lifetime. Yeah. And so we thank the Lord for her service. Amen. She's a good teacher. Incidentally, we have another young lady. We call her Sister Symphony. Yeah. Amen. Because she does a lot of singing. But she'll also open that word. That's Evangelist Cynthia oh, Franks. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. She'll not only read and quote that word to you, but if you need a prayer that's going to reach heaven, I want you to understand 
this woman is in her element when it's time to pray. You all know Sister Vanessa Pearson. We come in, we, we come in, we come in some Wednesday nights, and I'm, sometimes it's hard to get the service started. Amen. Because the presence of the Lord is so uh, rich here. And so those are those are the people. Uh, let me say it like this: those are the people who have professed a call to preach. Amen. But we have some others. Uh, we have some others. I don't call preachers. I only, I only, I only uh, train preachers. It's up to God to call preachers. But you all do know, um, Philip wasn't. Philip was chosen to be a deacon. But even though he didn't have the title of preacher, Philip did a whole lot of preaching. I mean, we used to call them uh, bootleg <laughs> preachers. Man, so we got a, we got a, I, you know, I ain't gonna mention many names, <coughs> Sister Camille. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. uh, mention many, not gonna mention uh, uh, many, many names. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm not gonna mention, I'm not gonna mention uh, uh, Sister Marilyn. <coughs> I'm not gonna mention too many, you know, too many. We got some people that, you know, if you need a word, they can give you a word. Amen. And I want you to understand something. All of us need to be in the place where we can deliver a timely word. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, I use my time. Hopefully, uh, there are a couple of people uh, that are not here today that I absolutely have to mention. Uh, and I don't care what state Willie Franks you are in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't care where you are. You are one of us and we appreciate you and we love you very much uh, also we would fail uh, wouldn't fail to mention uh, Sister Patricia Laurel and, uh, she was here on Wednesday and, uh, she's, a, she's a faithful supporter amen and some of you all don't know she was not only a preacher she was pastoring at one time amen and so as a pastor she's very very sensitive uh, to me as pastor. I get many texts from her, many words of encouragement. In fact, I don't want to. I want to. want to put anybody on the spot, but when she's not going to be in service on the stream, she tells me. Y'all didn't. Y'all. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? Some. You know. Some people. I don't. You know. People go to the hospital. I find out after they get out. And, you know. You know, sometimes people just don't communicate to their pastor like they used to. But well, she sent me a text yesterday. She said, there's a pastoral celebration. It's at 2 o'clock, but I should be, I should still be on the stream. I said, God bless you, though. <laughs> Amen. And so we certainly recognize her today. And the last one I will recognize, you can tell I ain't going to preach long. Uh, uh, well, I got two more then to mention. Uh, all the way in New York, Evangelist Moni Velasquez. We thank you, thank you for all the service all the time. And some of you all don't know, she still supports the ministry from where she is. I told her, do your time. And when your time is up, come on. Everybody say, come home, Moni. She put now normal need. She crying now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's that the way she is. And then certainly, last but not least, I want to mention uh, Dad Virgil Griffin. Yeah. 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 Dad Virgil Griffin is a. I'm I'm praying that if I get a chance, and I believe I will, to live long, yeah. I want my mind to be keen yeah. and sharp. Yeah. Amen. My mother kept a very keen mind up until the end. And Dad Griffin, if you don't know that word, don't you go messing with Dad Griffin. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Dad, Dad know that word and he knows how to pray. He knows how to encourage. And so I want to take time personally and thank you all for helping us uh, deliver the word of the Lord in this place. Amen. Amen. All right, one more time. Bootleg. 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 I did 
I forgot Lisa Richardson, didn't yeah. Lisa Richardson, even though you may be at work. Amen. We appreciate your labor in the word and your labor here in the word of God. Did I miss anybody else? Did I miss them? I hope I got them all. I should have brought my, I, did, I didn't plan to do this, but sometimes you got to take time out and let people know you appreciate it. Amen. I want you all to understand how much I appreciate you all and the work you do. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. We have people that, um, I call them unsung heroes because they do. They just do whatever the church needs. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ebony is here every time I need her. Amen. Every time I and every church should have a musician that takes pride in being in service and playing for the services. You may not look at it as ministry, but it is. She ministers the word through song. So we appreciate her labor, her and Corey and Gary. Uh, they work good together for us to have music. <laughs> we talking, good, we talking good about you now. We talking good about you. Now. <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> she she asked me if I'm singing. I said maybe. I've been singing all morning. Uh, um, so. center field, uh -huh. and then you had what were called utility players. Utility player was the kind of player that could go play any position if somebody got hurt. Sister yeah. Natasha Hilliard is a utility worker yeah. in our church. Yeah. And, and I mean, from, from preparing flyers and taking offering and keeping track of records, uh, she don't want me to say this, but I'm going to say it. She's fussing at me all the time. She says, Pastor, you don't need to be cutting grass. She said, if you call me, she said, I'll cut the grass. But my mother raised gentlemen. Amen. So I'm, my mother raised, and not that I don't appreciate it, but my mother always taught us to treat ladies as ladies. Amen. And so, so I just, you know, when the grass need cut, I just 
sneak off and do it and let us fuss afterwards. <laughs> Amen. Okay, all right, all right. You all with me? Yes, sir. Okay, don't go down the road. Let me be very, very thorough with this word because uh, we've been out of church, our own church, for the last two weeks. And we've been visiting to other churches. And I haven't gotten the kind of emphasis on this theme that I would like. So I would encourage you, if you haven't been listening to Wednesday night, go back and listen to the Wednesday night streams. Because what I have found is that the last three, the last three for sure, this theme and next month's theme are part of a progression. I believe that God is speaking to the church and he's trying to move us a direction. And I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to do it anyway. This month we're talking about matters of the heart. Next month, we're going to talk about moving closer to God. And if you ever uh, plan to move closer to God, you got to deal with the issues and the matters of your heart. And so uh, if you haven't had a chance, take a look at those Wednesday evenings uh, Bible studies about the heart. And this morning, I have to be short, but I want to be thorough this morning. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. All right. I got two passages of scripture. I'm only, only going to use one of our home based scriptures, and then I'm going to marry it to a couple in the prophet Jeremiah. Would you stand to your feet? Find Proverbs 4 23. The sweet light in his eyes. I'm sorry. That song is in my spirit now. Proverbs 4.23, I'm going to read it in your hearing for time's sake. And uh, the next portion, stick your thumb or your finger in at Jeremiah 29. We always read verses, verse number 11. But I want to read 12 and 13 to you today. You all, you all know Jeremiah 29, 11 by heart, don't you? I know my thoughts, you know, towards you. Thoughts are good and not evil. Okay, that's a good verse, but I want to read a couple after that, all right? Okay, Proverbs 4.23 says this. It says, keep thy heart, keep your heart, and keep it with all diligence. The reason you got to keep it with all diligence for, because out of it, out of your heart, are the issues of your life. Slip over to Jeremiah 29. The sleeping shall rise from their slumbering place. Jeremiah 29, 12. Here it is. It says, Then shall you call upon me. And you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I'll hear you. Yeah. 13 says, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And Lord bless you. You may be seated. I want to talk from this thing very briefly. With all my heart. All right. Look at somebody say, with all my heart. With all my heart. Brothers, sisters, it's easy to sweeten I love you. All you have to do is include the words behind it. With all my heart. Amen. Amen. That supersizes I love you. It takes it uh, to another level. Because it not only expresses love, but it expresses the depth of love. Yeah. When you examine love, you find out that love is like water. Okay, you can have two feet of water, four feet of water, six feet of water, ten feet of water. Because water in and of itself depending on where you put it and how deep the receptacle you put it in, takes depth. Yes. 
And as deep as you can dig something, water can be that deep. Amen. And love is the same way. Love has vibrations of depth. One of the greatest uh, stories of love in the Bible, incidentally, is not between a man and a woman. It's between, you know, between two friends, actually. Yeah. Now, let me, let me preface this because a lot of people use this particular verse to justify homosexuality. Yeah. But there are too many other verses yeah. that speak against homosexuality. Yeah. But it speaks about great love between King David and the son of the sitting king, Saul. His name was Jonathan. The Bible says that Jonathan loved David as his own soul. Their bond was so rich and so deep that he celebrated everything that God had in store for David. You know when you got a real friend? You got a real friend when you can get blessed and they not get jealous of you. Amen. That's right. That's the truth. You got, a, you, you got a friend who can celebrate just as hard as you when you're being blessed. That Look, on, look at somebody say, hang on to that kind of friend. By right, Jonathan was the heir to the throne. But he understood that the plan of God didn't include him being king. And so he strips himself of his robe. He puts it on David. Strips himself of royal garment. Acknowledging that God had made choice of him. All right. My point is love has depth. And you can express depth when you surrender all of your heart into that particular issue. Are you with me today? Amen. Solomon admonishes us. He says, keep our hearts and keep it with all diligence. That is, we should use great care. We should pay great uh, attention to detail to guard and protect what we allow in our heart. We have to guard the kind of things that we take to heart. And the reason we have to guard it is because out of our heart, flow the issues and the matters of our lives. In fact, every issue you deal with, every matter that you contend with, can be traced to the condition or the content of your heart. Depending on what's in your heart, has a great bearing on how you deal and respond to situations. The Bible says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings good things. And so when you have good things in your heart, you can bring good things out of your heart. And when, uh, conversely, when you have evil things in your heart, those are the kind of things that proceed out of your heart. So we have to always be on guard to make sure that the content of our heart has good things in it and we have to shun things of evil that want to set up and take place in our heart. Are you with me today? Yeah. Because your heart, the contents of your heart, can be traced to every issue in your life. How you deal with your children, how you deal with your spouse, how you deal with your co-workers, how you deal with your money, how you deal with your food, how you deal with your health, where you go, when you go, how you go, can all be tracked and traced to what's in your heart. The convictions of what you believe down in your heart. In fact, the very quality of your life depends on the condition of your heart. You want a good life? You got to take care of the heart. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. And to ensure that we get the highest quality of life, because I don't want to just exist. I want good life. I want abundant life. But to ensure that we get a high quality of life, are you ready? You got to make sure you got a high quality of heart. Because out of your heart flow the issues of your life. Amen. So when our hearts are pure, when they're filled with good things, when they are righteous and wholesome things, it changes our perspective. And instead of seeing what's going on, we see the hand and the grace of God in the situation. 
Conversely, when we don't have the right things in our heart, instead of seeing the mercy and the grace of God, we see the trauma and the intensity of the enemy's work. You know what I'm saying? Right, sir. Well, here's what the Bible said. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart. Yes. It's the pure in heart that see God. Yes. It's the pure heart who can go into a situation and while one man is calling it trash, somebody else is calling it trash. perspective. Yes. You get perspective. Your heart gives you perspective. And so the pure in heart see God. And the pure in heart have high quality of life. And if we want high quality of life, we have to ensure that the contents of our heart and the things that we receive into our heart are things that are wholesome and righteous and upright. Amen. Here's what the word of God teaches us. The word of God teaches us that there's a correlation between the life you live and Christ in the heart. When you have Christ in the heart, he said, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. He said, my yoke is... When Christ is in the heart, there's an easier path. Yes. The Bible says that the way of a transgressor is hard. When the heart is hardened, amen, evil things come upon you if you don't guard the condition of the heart. You got to watch what you allow in your heart. You got to watch who you allow in your heart. You got to watch. Can I say this? You got to watch it when you feel a twinge of something in your heart and you don't address it right away. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so, you know, you know, it's like, like planting seed. Amen. It's easier to pull a seed out of the ground when it's a sapling rather than letting it grow to some size to try to pull it out. Okay, well, let me help, let me help the grass people. Get dandelions early. When you first see them sprout up, that's the time to go yeah. working on them. Yeah. You don't want them to get big and strong with a big, long root because then when you go and pull on it, you don't get all the root. Yeah. And if you don't get all the root, a few days later, here it come again. Yeah. The heart is the same way. You got to see certain things in the heart. You got to deal with it early. You got to deal with anger early. You got That's why the Bible said don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Deal with it early. You got to deal with envy. You got to deal with jealousy. You got to deal with disappointment. You got to deal with those things quickly so that they don't take root in, in the heart. Because if you let certain things root in the heart and stay there, it starts to feel like a normal part of the heart. We never want abnormal to feel like normal. Okay, it's abnormal when you're mad all the time. That's an abnormality. Okay. It's abnormal when you cuss all the time. That's an abnormality. Okay. That's not normal. That's not normal. The world is normalizing perversion for us. Not normal. For me and the hook and kiss like women. It's not normal for women to marry and embrace each other like women and men. Abnormal! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it's because certain things have rose, taken root in the heart. And because it's in the heart now, it's like it's a normal part of the life. So you got to guard. Look at somebody say, guard your heart. Got to guard your heart. The Word of God teaches us that there's a correlation. Our life improves when Jesus is in our heart. In fact, Jesus said in John 10 and 10, He said, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and that every time the devil show up, he's trying to steal something from you. He's trying to kill and separate something out of your life. And he's trying to destroy something that should be in your life so that it's not in your life. Yeah. But Jesus said, I am come that you may have life, life and have it. Life. Look at somebody say abundant life. Abundant life. Oh, no, I don't want to just exist. I don't want to just go to work and church and home. I want to live. I want to enjoy the good things that God has prepared for us. Yeah. Not that work, church, and home are not good, but I want a little more than that. Yeah. I want to pull my shoes off every now and then and feel sand between my toes. Yeah. Be under a parasol with some sunglasses. Ain't nobody saying nothing yeah. to you. There are things that you can enjoy and still be safe. So he said, I come that you may have life and have it 
more abundantly. He teaches us that if we confess with our mouths, receive in our hearts the Lord Jesus Christ, believe that God has raised him from the dead after dying a sacrificial death for our sins, that we would not only be saved, we'll be saved from sin, saved from death, saved from destruction. Christ in our hearts enables us to experience abundant life. I'm sorry, you cannot experience abundant life without Jesus Christ. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care where you live. I don't care what you drive. I don't care what title and degree is on your name. Abundant life does not exist apart from Jesus Christ. There's some people talking about, I'm living a good life. Not if you live in a life that don't take you to the lake. That's not a good life. Amen, somebody. Amen. Rich man, can I call you? Would you trade places with Lazarus? He said, yes, sir, Pastor Bush, in a moment. Because I received good things in my life, but now I'm tormented in the flames, and I see Lazarus over there in Abraham's bosom. I can't get to him. He can't get to me. I can't even send him to tell the rest of my family, don't come here. Amen. Abundant life doesn't exist apart from Jesus Christ. I've seen a bumper sticker. They don't have bumper stickers so much anymore. But I've seen a bumper sticker that said a bad day fishing is better than a good day working. And I understood the principle. But it's better to have abundant life here without some of the amenities of life and live eternally with God than to have everything down here and to miss eternity with God. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here? Christ in the heart enables us to live the abundant life. And that's what Jesus promised us. And that's what God has prepared for us. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 3.17, the eighth part, he said, That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Don't miss this. Because if you miss this, you won't know how to invite God into your heart. You won't know how to give him all of your heart if you miss this portion of the message. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. The way you open your heart to Christ to come in and live is that you have to surrender and you have to develop a faith. What is faith? Well, that's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's good bar, you know, Bible talk. But faith is how much you believe about God's word. Yes. That's what it is. God has said something, either it's true or not, you can obey it or not, and when you obey it, you have faith, and when you disobey it, you don't. It really comes down to how much of God's word you know and how much of it you obey. That's how Christ dwells in the heart. You fill the heart with God's word. You believe on God's word. And then God and his word are one. When you, listen, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was the word is God. You want to fill your heart with God? You got to fill your heart with the word. You can't hit and miss. Shut and jab. You can, you know, you, you got to have it. You got to have it on a consistent basis. You got to have a rich word. You got to have a vibrant word. You got to have a word that's going to tell you who you are, what you can do. You got to have a word that's going to help you overcome. You got to have a word that's stronger than the message that's coming out of the world. Oh, so right. I don't care if gas get ten dollars a gallon. If I got a car, I'm driving. I don't want to pay $10 for it, but I'm not going to park my car if it gets to be $10. I got free! How can I go with the gospel and can't drive around? I got to be able to move. Hello, somebody. I, I got excited just then, didn't I? So Christ dwells in your heart by faith. It's by faith he gets in your heart. And it is faith in God's word that Christ comes to dwell in our heart. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by word the word of God. So as we continue to hear God's word, study God's word, 
search God's word, we build faith. And as we build faith, we, can I say it like this, build an edifice that the Lord can reside in in our hearts. When it comes to Christ residing in your heart, are you ready? You need to build him a mansion. All right. Who said not a shack? That, that was my next line. You don't, want, you, don't want to, you don't want to have a shack full of faith. I, 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 think, I think Andre Crouch said on one of his albums, one of his albums, there was a song that said, Lord, build me a cabin in the corner of glory. I don't want no cabin. I want a mansion. I want something broad. I want something expansive. I want something luxurious. And so does the Lord. He don't want a corner of your heart. A piece, a slab, a slice, a chunk of your heart. He wants it all. Look at somebody say, with all my heart. So as we continue to build faith, we prepare a place for Christ to live in our hearts. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that is, he exists, and that he is a rewarder of them that, let's say it again, he is a rewarder of them that, that means without a diligent search, you don't get rewarded. He only rewards diligent. Now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get a little dicey through this portion right here. But I want you to tune in. Don't tune me out. Because the world has taught us you can half step and get away with stuff. Good God Almighty. Whatever happened to the time that you could bring a contractor in and not have to watch him like a hawk to make sure everything is done right. Right, you invite somebody in to work on your place now, you better keep an eye on them Amen. to make sure they're doing it. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Amen. We've been taught and we've been led to believe that we can accept half done service. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Please, you take your car to the car repair shop and drive off the lot after they said they fixed it with the same noise and the same problem that you took it in for. Amen. Because there's not pride now in work and performance. Amen. But when it comes to searching God and looking for God, we can't afford to have do it. Amen. We can't afford to, especially in the day we're living now, you can't afford to miss directions from God in this time. Amen. If God's saying save and you spending, you're going to pay for that down the road. Yes. Bless his name. Not in my message. But Joseph goes to Egypt. God sent him there to preserve life. Pharaoh has a dream. He says to Pharaoh, after Pharaoh had his dream, Pharaoh seen seven good ears of corn, seven lean ears of corn, and the skinny corn ate up the big corn and didn't get any fatter. And then he said, he seen seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. And the skinny cows ate up the fat cows and didn't get any fat. He knew the dream meant something. He didn't know what he meant. They called Joseph. Joseph said, oh, yeah, the Lord showed you that. You're going to have seven years of dirt. You have seven bumper crop years. You're going to have so much you don't know what to do with it. You're going to have stimulus checks. But after them seven good years, you're going to have seven lean years that are going to erase the seven good years that you had. Joseph said, here's what Pharaoh should do. Pharaoh should save in the good years so that he has to go through the lean years. Are you all with me? Amen. See, a lot of us think Joseph got promoted for his dreaming, interpreting dreams. That's not what promoted him. He came up with a savings plan. Amen. Pharaoh looked at him and said, you came up with it. Who's better to run it than you? Yeah. He goes to the second in Egypt. Yeah. And while everybody else, hear me, while everybody else is starving, they got corn. Yeah. Right. 
That's why you can't afford to miss God. That's why you got to hear what God is saying. Because if you miss what God is saying, you'll pay for it. Bless his name. And so we diligently seek God. And when we diligently seek God, he fills our heart and he rewards the diligent search. Look at somebody say he rewards, he rewards. the diligent search. Diligent. Now tell him one more time. Say he rewards, he rewards. only the diligent search. Listen, God's not going to reward you when you half-heartedly looking for him. Just like sisters, brothers, can I help you all? Don't fall in love with people who half-heartedly love you. Amen. Don't do that. What do you mean half-hearted? I mean they love you when it suits them, but when it's inconvenience for them, then it's not love. Come on here. They got hot in here all of a sudden. And so he rewards the diligent search. Here it is. Let me finish and bring this home. In verse number 12 of our text, the prophet Jeremiah assures us that we can search for God and we can find him. We can not only search for him, we can find him. Uh, the, the eighth part of that verse says, you shall seek and find me. Shall means 100%. It means when the Bible says shall, there's no exception. It means if you search, you're going to find God. All these people are saying, I'm looking for God. Listen, you can find him. He's not hard to find. In, a, in fact, he's presenting himself in such a way that you can find him. God is not, you know, God ain't playing hide and seek with us trying to keep us from seeing and know who he is. God wants us to know what the will of the Lord is. The Bible says that we should know what the will of God is. And so you can seek him, you can find me, but there's a condition that we must meet if our search is going to be successful. There's something we have to accomplish if when we look for God, we're going to find him. It's the B part of that verse. He said, you'll find me only if you seek for me with all your heart. God promises, God guarantees that if you look for him with all of your heart, you will find him. Let me say that again. This is a promise from God. He says that if you look for me and use all of your heart, don't withhold any part of your heart from me, I guarantee you will find me. All right. All right. If you search for me with your whole heart. Amen. And so we must conduct a diligent search with all our heart. It must be an honest search. We can't harbor anything. We can't hide any places. We can't keep a secret covert, you know, stash. You know how people do. They stash something when they figure, you know, it might uh, be gone. Let me, let, me, let me tell on my brother here for a minute. He and I use the same refrigerator. We bring leftovers home. And sometimes we'll put leftovers under something so that the other brother don't see it. <laughs> Amen. But if you got a keen eye, you can see what's in there. And he said, you know, I had some of this in the refrigerator. Have you seen it? I said, yeah, I ate it. <laughs> Honest confession is good for the soul. And there ain't but two of us in there. I can't say, no, I didn't. <laughs> Amen. If it's gone, I had it. But you know what? We do that with the heart sometimes. We give God this. We give God that. We give God this. But oh, this right here, God. I, you can't handle this right here. I need to keep my hand on this. I need to keep my eye on this. Lord, you can you can have my relationship, you can have my friendship, you can have but 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 money now money. I, I need to hang on to this because I need enough. I, you can have this, you can have that, God. But this part right here is so sensitive. I not that I don't trust you, but I just feel better if I put my hand on it. And I got my eye on it. Yeah. That's withholding part of your heart. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Okay. Almost done. We got to search diligently. We got to use all the heart. Look at somebody say, all your heart. Okay, let me close this and bring this in now. 
When we refer to the heart, we're not talking about that organ that pumps blood through your body. That's not the heart that the Bible is referring to. We mean the innermost part of you. We mean the real you. What you believe down deep on the inside. The convictions that you live by. Can I, tell, can I say something else to you? Integrity is not breaking your convictions. When it's something you believe and you believe it wholeheartedly, you rather take and suffer wrong than to do wrong. When you, have, when you have a conviction, look, can I tell you, let me tell you a conviction I have. Can I tell you all my conviction? My conviction is I should preach as hard to two people as I do to 200 people. Because it's not the number of people I preach to, it is delivering the word. Amen. That's my conviction. Amen. That's my, that's my conviction. That's why I try to be instant in and out of season because it's my conviction. And you don't violate your convictions. When you have a conviction, something that you believe, you stay loyal and faithful to it. And that is what maintains your integrity. It's Job when he's going through all this stuff that is, his, we always say, you know, his wife said, curse God and die. But we miss what she said before she said that. She said, dost thou still retain thine integrity? Are you going to still believe in God after everything you're going through right now? Are you still holding on to God is good with all the stuff you're going through? Just curse him and die. Job said, huh, woman, you're not the same one I married. What happened to you? You sound like them foolish women. Foolish women tell you curse God. Walk away from God. Don't serve God. Bless his name. And so it's the innermost part of you. The heart is the innermost part of you. When the Bible speaks of the heart, it's not talking about the organ. It's talking about your mind. It's talking about your will and your emotions. Can you say with me? My mind, my, mind. my, will, my will, and my emotion. my emotion. When you search for God, you have to include your mind. You have to include your will and you have to include your emotion. Are you with me there? Amen. The heart is the seat of our mind. It's where we get our thoughts, our words. It's where our actions originate. The heart also includes our will. And our will is the ability to have fortitude and tenacity on decisions when everything else is telling us not to do it. It's your will that gets you out of the bed on Monday morning when the covers are warm and the floor is cold. It's your will that gets you up to go to work when you feel like staying home. Look at somebody say your will. will. Now look at them say command your will. will. The heart includes the will. That's the place where we make decisions, tenacity, fortitude to follow through. It's where you get the follow through power in the strength of your will. Come on here. That's how you stay on the diet, your will. That's how you stay with that exercise. You ain't nobody saying nothing here. Y'all quiet. Y'all looking at me. I, did I start meddling just then? Amen. You wash clothes, you dry clothes, and you fold clothes with fortitude. You don't let them sit in the room, in the basket for. Say, move on, Pastor. Say, move on, Pastor. Move on, Pastor. Leave them clothes sitting. <laughs> sitting in that basket three or four days. <laughs> Look, now y'all got to stop laughing because I got to finish this message. The will gives you fortitude to overcome and accomplish. Are you with me? I see it now. Okay, okay, Lord. I'm, I'm just going to stay where the Lord told me. A few months ago, when I went to Planet Fitness, you couldn't get on a machine. There were so many people in there at the beginning of the year who had, who had turned over a new leaf. 
but that leaked and turned over again. Because you can go in there and get on any machine you want to get on any time of day because that crowd and that rush who had good intention and good decision didn't have discipline of will. Couldn't stick with it. Couldn't stay with it. You know what the pandemic has revealed in the visible church? People who can't stick with it. Make good decisions with good intention. Start in a good direction, but can't maintain it. Can't stick with it. Can't stay on it. Can't get consistent. Can't get regular. Can't get a gait. Can't get a pace. They just kind of, instead of a bird that's using his wing, floating and flying everywhere, they have tucked their wings, and now they only hop where they want to go. Your heart includes your will. You have to discipline your will. You can't have your feelings telling you what to do. You gotta tell you what to do despite your feelings. See, strength of will will help you get away from folk who say they love you but they ain't treating you right. Strength of will will keep you in a place even though things are working against you if you got an assignment of God in that place. Bless his name. It's the fortitude to follow through. The heart is where the will, our motivation. Can you, are you ready for this? Your attitudes come out of your will. You can never control what happens to you. You can always control how you respond. It's in the power of the will. Amen, somebody. Amen. And when you feel that heat rising and your blood starting to bubble and curl, uh, get off the eye. Yeah. That's what you do to water when it's boiling. If you want it to stop it from boiling, you know what you do? You pull it off the eye. It don't go down right away, but if you leave it off, it'll go down. Yeah. Anger is the same way. You can't feed anger and expect it to subside. Yeah. Fortitude. Fortitude. Is the power to go against what I'm feeling to do what I know is right. I'm closing. The heart also is the vault of deep-seated emotions and feelings. It's where your passions lie. Many of us will show surface emotion, but the world has taught us that if you show emotions that they don't agree with, they will pound you for the emotion you show. And so they have forced people into a repressive state of emotion. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. I'm trying to help you right here. It's abnormal not to cry. It's abnormal not to laugh. It's abnormal not to feel. You better stop listening to these people. Talking about all that noise and all that excitement and all that jubilation over in church. It don't take all that. They'll tell you sit down in church and get right out of here and go right to the cult game and lose their mind. Yelling at the television. Don't tell me it's too loud in church and you in the stadium in zero weather with your shirt off painted green and a block of cheese on your head. They want you to be emotional everywhere except church. Watch this. And you can't see God without emotion. Emotion has to be included because any emotion, every emotion that you have is seeking expression. When you express an emotion, you resolve an emotion. Come on, here's the, here's the way it works. Okay, If you're sad, you cry, but you don't cry forever. You cry until the sorrow subsides and then you stop crying. Until the sorrow comes again. But at least you resolve it. But when you don't resolve sorrow, it builds up. You're a bomb waiting to explode. Right. That's true. Every emotion is looking for expression. 
There's a proper way to express it. Come on here. Anger is not a sin. The Bible tells you to be angry. <laughs> the be attitudes, one of them is not in Matthew. It's in the epistle. It says be angry. There are times you're supposed to be angry. You give a curfew to your child, he don't come home on time. You're supposed to be angry. But you're not supposed to sin while you're angry. Because you have to express that anger. And if you don't express that anger properly, you're going to express it improperly. Amen. Come on here. Amen. Stop saving them whoopings. Come on. Come. See, we in this generation now that don't whoop, they don't whoop children anymore. But the Bible says you, you spare that rod. You, and you save too many whoopings, then when it's time to get them, you're angry. Yeah. And you're so angry that now you're not whipping them, you're abusing them. Oh, it's hot, it's hot. It's hot in here. Everybody say, Priest Pastor. Priest Pastor. Every time I tell y'all take a drink, I think I'm going to take a drink myself now. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. But you got to seek God. Say with all your heart. Here's the way you got to seek God. There has to be a transformation of the mind. There has to be a surrendering of the will. And an expression of the change. One more time. Transformation of the mind. Submission of the will expression of the change. If you're going to seek God, your mind got to change. Yes, sir. If you haven't been searching for God and you want to search for God, you got to think differently. You got to turn the television off. You got to get off your phone. Get off your phone. I'm not saying that not to ever use it. But you lose track of time when you get on the phone and you waste so much time on your phone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Isn't it funny how you can get down to pray, pray everything you think of, and then look up and you've only been praying five minutes? Yeah. And then you can get on that phone and look down and look up. It's an hour later. Yeah. Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Be there has to be a transformation of the mind. When your mind is transformed and you seek God with this, the Bible says then you can prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. If you're going to seek for God, you've got to change your mind. You've got to move him up. You've got to move him up on priority list. Number two, you have to surrender your will. Look at somebody say surrender. surrender. Jesus said not my will, but you got to surrender your will. It's not what you want. It's what God wants for you. Jesus not only said, not my will, but thy will be done. He taught us to pray. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Here it is. What's the next line? Not my will. Thy will be done. You have to come away from what you feel to do what you know is right. And then lastly, you have to express emotion. How will God know that you love him if you never express it? Amen. Don't tell me you love me. You can't talk to me. You can't smile at me. I don't get a card on my birthday. You don't say hello when I come in the house. Come on. That ain't love. And how can you tell God you love him? Are you ready? Can y'all handle this? Hold on to the seat. This is tight. The Bible says, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? How can you, how can you be seeking for God and you're not praying? You're not reading the word. 
Y'all ready? I say this every service. You not coming to church. I'm seeking God. Where are you looking for him at? Last time I checked, he was at his house. <laughs> sister, sister Drew, I'm going to tell on Sister Drew. Sister Drew, the other day, went to Walmart. She said, Pastor, what kind of apples you like? I said, well, I said, I like gala. I like uh, uh, jazz. I said, she mentioned a few other ones. I said, well, that's what I like. And uh, she went and she bought some apples. And I found out later that she called, but I didn't pick the phone up. You all do know I don't pick the phone up every time. Yeah. Y all, y all, have y'all found that out yet? Yeah. Okay, okay. But if you text me, I will return the text. Okay. Don't send me, I return text only. Okay, if you text me, because text ain't going to take a whole lot of time. I just can't stay on the phone 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. Amen. Folk, folk get anointed when they start talking to the pastor. <laughs> yeah. and, and, so, and so she texted me and she said, I got the apples and I'll bring them if you're home. I said, oh yeah, I'm home. Because that's where you can find me. You can find me at my house. In fact, if you're looking for me, if it ain't church time, my house is the first place you should look. So how you gonna find God? And you looking for him in the barbershop? Well, at the nail salon? Well, no. At the pedicure place? You looking for a word in Walmart? <laughs> the, the Walmart word. And normally the person preaching to you in Walmart ain't going to church. Ah, that's about the way I thought it was going down. The next time somebody posts a scripture online, ask them what was the message last Sunday at their church and see if they answer. I'm done. But, but, I'm, but I'm serious. I'm, I'm serious because if we're going, especially in a time like this, if we're going to draw closer to God, there are parts of ourselves that we've held from God that we have to release into his presence. Okay, we got to stop shucking, we got to stop jiving, we got to stop trying to fool people and fool ourselves. Amen. You know if you're going, running hard after God. And if you're not running hard after God, you need to pick up the pace. My, my son and Chris, they were talking about the basketball today. They were talking about um, how certain teams, instead of running fast, they walk it. Walk the ball up the court. And they said, this is going to be a good year. I said, yeah, for everybody except that team. Because when you put a lot of buckets together, it's called a run. And if you never run, you can't have a run. And you can't move closer to God unless you put your whole heart in it. Amen. Takes all of your heart. Amen. Amen. I bow your heads there. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I didn't shake, grab, and roll, but I think I think I got to the spot today. Okay. It's your heart heart. You got to educate your mind with the word so that your mind changes. And anything you love more than God is your God. You got to submit your will. You got to surrender to God. To surrender to God means do what he says instead of doing what you want to do. And then lastly, you got to express what God has done and is doing for you. A change, a change, a wonderful change has come over me. He changed my life. Now I'm free. He changed my life complete. And he'll change it if you surrender the whole heart. Shall we pray? Father, in the name 
the name of Jesus, we bless your name today. We've said some uh, very uh, tight things here today. Uh, not to injure or to maim, but to bring us to the place of actual sincere surrender. Father, if there's any part of my heart that I haven't surrendered to you, search me. Search my heart. Search my mind. Search my will. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, I want you to take it out. Strengthen me. Straighten me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. In Jesus' name. The Lord's people said, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank you.